All right, we're back again, man. We're getting uh, our consistency going and uh, getting back to it, getting back in the groove. It's been a crazy year and a half or two, but it's uh, episode 16, Rabbit Season Podcast with my homegirl, the home, the homegirl Moni. Yeah. Got to make, hey, some, noise. Welcome, welcome. Gotta, gotta make some noise for that. And you know what? Um, you, you're you're familiar with the with the spot you've been to the studio before we'll just start like that um you even helped co-host some shows with us before on the b-side show yep, yep. uh you're no stranger to you know being on stages and and uh being on the mic and all that stuff so um what's been cracking though it's been crazy like i was mentioning it's uh it's been a crazy year we haven't seen you in a cool minute yeah except social media of course right 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 which yeah. i kind of like i've just been posting memes and stuff because even on i'm not even that like visible on my social media i've just been like a hermit uh -huh. for the last two years well and I same here yeah yeah and i feel like i can't be too hard on myself because like it's been a global pandemic mm -hmm. and yeah. everyone else has kind of been on the same yeah. shit yeah. yeah so i'm trying to like not be so hard on myself on like walking out the door and be like such a weirdo like oh my god <laughs> yeah <laughs> there well, are people here <laughs> yeah right hey, hey but you know what too sometimes we need to step back we were talking before you know we started recording too but sometimes we need to just uh, take a step back and and uh you know for our own um health and everything too yeah, mentally sure. sometimes your body just needs a, a break just to yep. relax you, yeah. you, you know because we're always on the move i know you're the same way but we're always doing something and Sometimes we, our body has to tell us to chill for a sec. You know what I mean? Just chill out. You yeah, know, take for a break. Sure, for sure. I think like for me, I was cool when the pandemic hit. Like that was fine. But then you know the the George Floyd um, uh, uprising started happening. All these things at once. And yeah, and it just like I started kind of like you know re-strategizing re or reprioritizing my time. Mm -hmm. And then you just start thinking about like. You just start questioning yourself, like, am I really spending my time in the most efficient way, in the yeah. most meaningful way, in the most, you know, you kind of just start thinking about, like, you know, your mortality or, like, you know, uh, your relationship with your family. And, you know, it's just, like, because, like, these super important, pivotal things are happening in the world. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden you're, like, just ripped out of your normal routine of like your plan on what you want to do with your life you know what i'm saying and it's like oh wait i have people in my life who love me that probably want to spend more time with me you know so it's just like it was kind of like a a jolt a jolt of like you know reality that is necessary but yeah so it's been like i think it's been hard to come back from that because it's like is is spending is spending my life going to like trying to be a successful rapper <laughs> as um um how would i say it is that really a selfless thing am i being selfish by choosing to spend all my time and effort on my dreams mm -hmm. when there's so much hurt and pain in the world that i could be maybe contributing to in a more you know more uh tangible way you know so it was just like yeah super deep shit <laughs> like super no music makes shit. people heal though so it is something exactly you know? really? exactly it, i had to come to that conclusion myself though you know and and, and you know what that that's what's crazy because i was i was telling you too that I, I relate um to some of the stuff you post like when you were taking a break even from social media and stuff i like i hadn't po i started posting a couple things here and there again but I wasn't really like on there too heavy because again um you know things were going on also that i have i was dealing with like not like i lost my I, well I went, they put me on furlough and all that shit started happening yeah. so you know I'm, I'm trying to make sure ends meet i got mm -hmm. the family at the house now man it's not just myself anymore like you were saying it, you start to feel like am i just doing something when i when i could be doing this to help yeah this situation mm -hmm. instead of just think like i felt like i was just thinking about myself but then you know um my family's like telling me you, you need to get back to doing what you love doing it makes too. you happy and, and, and you're you maybe you i was too grouchy <laughs> yeah you're, you're you're a more enjoyable person yeah. when you have that outlet yeah i you know? i think that's that's kind of uh what happened with me it's like therapy you know yeah sure. like we need it 100 just like like you mentioned music as well and even 
like you said, because you were you were dropping videos and you were you were doing like stuff, you, like all your mostly yourself, yeah. Uh, dropping songs, videos, you know, editing stuff yourself, pretty pretty crazy. Because you had a, that's a lot of work on top of being the the one creating. Um, but you were dropping stuff pretty heavy, yeah. and then all this stuff kicked in, and like you said, you just needed a little break. But you were still making content though. Yeah, you know um, from the house from yeah. the crib <laughs> yeah i feel like i just had to you know with all this tiktok bullshit uh -huh. and it's like you get pe there are people who get rich because they find a certain mm -hmm. a certain thing to do on the internet oh, and it, they have uh, like their niche uh, you know audience and all of a sudden they're like <laughs> influencers making millions of dollars yeah, yeah you know what i mean so it was just like all right if right now my heart isn't in music how can i continue building the brand building my name you know so so i just kind of i i had to come to terms with the fact that i am an internet personality as much as i fucking hate saying that like oh yeah i am an internet personality you know people like, are I looking for be, them videos dude i like i want to be known for my artistry and for my music you know but i i i realized that my create like we were talking about earlier my creativity like comes in different ways so like Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll feel like doing writing music. Sometimes I won't. I'll end up doing a painting or, you know, I'll end up writing jokes or I'll end up doing skits or the, you know, the um, the Moni's Drinking Club that I was doing, the videos that I was doing. So, like, I just try not to judge my artistry or put it in a box. And I'm realizing that all this stuff is just going to come back to my brand. It's just going to come back well, to me. And, and, I, and I think that's... Uh you know the the route i like that's something that's always like i'm i, I always say entertainment because i like being mm, yeah. something that's always interested me is um i like being the one behind the scenes create like like at a show like a live show when i host yeah yeah yeah. like it means something to me that they have a good besides seeing their favorite artists like even in the intermissions i want them to remember that the show is dope so i'm going you know and I and I like to watch and, and see the, the product after by watching the reaction of the people taking it in, if that makes sense. Right, right. So, yeah, um, entertainment wise, it all it, it, especially nowadays more. I think everything ties in like yeah, you can act, you could sing, you could rap, you could, you know, uh, whatever, whatever it is. Right. Like, you know, and I, I'm, I'm kind of mad. I didn't think of you know riding a skateboard down the street to fleetwood mac drinking yeah. some juice uh, no, no. okay I, right? you know i would have oh, dog face yeah, yeah. I, I, I used would've. to always do that yeah. <laughs> it was before I phones did, though we i just did it. i didn't right. film it yeah i used to have it in my in my walkman in, right. in my walkman head headset but yeah um all the entertainment um kind of ties in now so mm -hmm. so even if you're not maybe putting a music video out or or a new song um, they can always catch some right. cooking with Moni or something. You right. Know? And honestly, it's not even like sometimes my creativity isn't even for like necessarily public consumption. So like I will do abstract art or I just started like learning how to do nails, like acrylic nails, gel nails, because it's some type of creating. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And so I don't know. Sometimes I feel like a crazy person all over my pl all over the place. And I think I feel like my parents are like <laughs> worried about me. Yeah. Like, lady, pick something and stick with it. You know? And then you could always, you could always go. You know, yeah, you you post your pets. You know, I think you have a cat too. You know, and people love the cat. Hey, I want yeah. to post more well, of the that, cat. That oh was part gosh, of what I was saying with the when she was doing the. Uh, I think it was called cook. Was no, it, it cooking? Oh, the drinking, the, right? Yeah, it was the yeah. Moni's drinking club. Drinking but I would, like, club. Do a themed yeah. cocktail. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she yeah, was yeah. wearing costumes and shit. Yeah. And yeah. and no, but the cats would randomly just pop out like. Oh, but when I remember seeing one of her clips, because even your like and it goes back kind of to tiktok your editing is on point so it's like the way people see it it's not just you know it's boom chop chop boom and things just happen and it, it's it's like you're watching a mini little comedy clip <laughs> right, and right, uh right, right. but i remember <laughs> shay one a, a cat look see me I, I don't know where that motherfucker popped out yeah. of it just went thook, and she was even in like saying something and she was like oh shit yeah. like the cat just fucking popped out like, it was my black cat metallica uh, she jumped from the, uh, the fridge though. yeah she jumped from the fridge to the um counter and i was just like i, I was literally I literally just turned the camera on or my phone on. I was walking back to like my mark. <laughs> she <just jumped laughs> She's all away from me. I'm supposed to be in this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> so it worked out perfectly, and I was like, oh, that's going to be in the video. That's a perfect way to start the video. What's the other one's name? Buddy. You, you have two, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, Metallica are they, and Buddy. They're uh, both males? Uh, Metallica is a girl, oh, Buddy's okay. the boy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. They're right. ferrets. Like, I did not know getting cats, like, they were going to be so crazy. I oh. mean, they open cabinets. Oh, like, yeah. Like, I have to put, like, Oh, well, because where you live, they're indoor cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they got, yeah, that's they how they so find it. Yeah, they oh got it. Oh, my God. Yeah. They're so mischievous. My, my brother. It's you, hilarious. His cat is. Uh, terrible. His. Uh, yeah, I got one. Pepper. Pepper yeah. Potts. She, <laughs> she's a independent lady. She just, she literally lives in the garage. Like, um, oh, she's she, got a nice setup. She, she goes in there just to get her wants. food, has a bed yeah. in there, everything, a scratching post, all that. She's cool. She's not really level, but she don't really like to, you know, like she's be all cuddly. She yeah, just, yeah, 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 yeah. She yeah. just rolls out, but every once in a while she'll just come up and, like, I'll just be in, the, like, you know blazing one or whatever out there and i look and i'll look over and there there she is just staring at me sitting there <laughs> <laughs> where the fuck did you come from man i know i wish my cats i wish that they had that option to go outside but at least at least they have each other so oh yeah crazy on yeah. each other yeah. <laughs> no but they they'll just take it out on your cabinets no oh worry. my god the curtains or something whatever oh it is oh my gosh yeah. <laughs> at three in the morning just running over me just like i'm sleeping and they're just running back and forth all over me cat playing tag into the oh cat. my god fucking cat cats are uh well i like all animals like you know people say like they're a dog person or a cat person like right i i, I oh, grew yeah, up i, I grew up around dogs. i grew up around both yeah. so mm. i mean different houses because we moved around a lot too but I, I i grew up around both so you know i've always had like pets and shit so yeah, it's time to end that stigma like yeah. dogs have to be against cats yeah, come on so we could all be together i know i know <laughs> you could be a dog and a cat person exactly. okay. it's 2021 now exactly Let's get it right um but yeah uh, you still obviously like i said uh you know during the downtime obviously everybody has to handle um you know uh their own situation make sure you're you're strong and healthy mentally and mm -hmm. physically and all that like i was saying um but even though you were like people like yourself, you, you need to create like you were just saying, you need to create. So I knew yeah. you, you, you would still find a way to do it. You know, yeah. even if you were off social for a little while, you were still uh, cooking some stuff up. And yeah, 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 which for we'll, sure. Which we'll get into in a sec, too. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, music wise, though, is that um, you were mentioning because I, I wanted to talk about that. Per, uh, that's kind of you have some stuff stacked up that you've been working on during yeah. this time yeah 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 no i have like i have a lot of music that i'm sitting on so as of right now it's just it's just trying to roll roll everything out how <laughs> in like the most professional but like yeah. artistic and comfortable way and, I, and i'm not trying to like be too controlling over it you know because sometimes it's like you have certain like expectations or vision for your art but like your pockets can't do that <laughs> so you're just like okay how can I be still put this out and still be proud of it, you know, but it fit inside my budget. So I did just recently, I kind of, it's a soft drop, uh, a song called Everything I Want. Um, and it's kind of, it's a, it's a mixture of, you know, some naughty lyrics, with, but with some like, you know, optimistic manifestation type shit. But um, so I just dropped that, but people were sending it to me like, yo, you just dropped this. Why haven't you been promoting it? I've been waiting for the homie to finish the trailer because I've been wanting to promote it with the trailer and he's been going through some shit. So, so it's been well, on even, hold. Even so more I'm, people so will I'm, catch on when that trailer drops. Yeah, 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 exactly. So that's why I'm like, uh, it's out, but kind of not, whatever, whatever. But um, yeah, no, I, I mean, like, I know the next song I want to do a music video for, like the project, the EP that I want to put out. It's just a matter of everything's there. It's just a matter of putting it all together and like, you know tying it up in a bow and, and and that's the thing uh two things like he but you know that i caught out of that though that people um i guess don't put enough value on is is investing in yourself you know and yeah. and yeah it's hard because we still gotta you know do our thing like i you know i 
I, I, I have my own house, you know what I'm saying? I'm not living with, you know. Right, and, I don't live with my mom and yeah, dad. Yeah, mom like, and dad. And, you know, <laughs> I'm out I, here paying I, all my own bills. I don't have a sponsor. I don't yeah. have a sugar daddy. I don't so, have a boyfriend. <laughs> See? Like, I'm, out, I'm not selling pussy. Yeah. Like, I'm really <laughs> out here doing this shit myself. A bunch of sugar daddies are going to be hitting you up by <laughs> after they watch this. <laughs> <After> <laughs> <laughs> right. All the sugar daddies going, wait, uh, are you... <laughs> Well, are you interested in one? Right, exactly. <laughs> no, but no, it's it, it's that it's in and so we still have to figure out a way to live and maintain, but still take some of that and put back into the craft. Yeah. Because then people are not going to receive it correctly if you just you know do some you know half-ass shit. You you get what exactly. I'm saying? You got to have the audio right, exactly. the, the the visuals and everything. So. Well, what's crazy is like I wish I knew when i was a younger artist that like your budget like promotion needs to be included in your budget so you can't blow all the money that you have for your budget on just the music video production you know what i mean so you might have to downscale your video so you have money for promotion and i wish i knew that earlier because i feel like i used to i have so much money on like videos and i'm like fuck and had no budget for promotion well and then see then and then there's where another battle comes in so when you now that you got that so now you downscale at least the size of 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 your budget for it but you still want the vision to be correct yes. to it. so then you have to figure out ways exactly. how can i make this happen without having this like or right without having a fucking guy in, uh, in a crane with a fucking camera or whatever it is whatever the case may be but then you got to start figuring out okay i could still make this happen if i did this and this so then you have to do extra work versus the extra money. So exactly. It's, it's all kind of hand in hand, man. Yeah. Yeah. So so let's talk about it with the uh, you you mentioned it briefly, but the lyrics. Um, you know, some of your stuff has that uh, sort of edge to it, and you've talked about it on the show before. But um, you know, maybe a, a sexual connotation yeah yeah in, yeah in some of your lyrics even even when you're being just lyrical you'll still uh -huh. like your your metaphors <laughs> are kind of metaphors are kind of based around like yeah, you know yeah, you know what yeah, i'm getting yeah, at but yeah but um um you, you've always felt is it that you've always felt open in that regard or or does writing it help you feel more open if that makes sense um i feel like i haven't I guess always been open. I think my influences are just uh, maybe more on the perverted side. Like I used to, um, like I love, I love like when I love when a woman rapper is like being sexual but still exuding like a lot of power and strength. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. so like I love like Shauna from DTP. Um, I fucking loved her growing up. And even like Ludacris, even Ludacris, like he'd be rapping his ass off, but super witty. You know what I mean? Good with like the sexual innuendos. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it has a lot to do with my influence. And for some reason, I think I have guy humor too. I think I have guy humor. So it's like really easy for me to go there. Um, it's not, I'm not uncomfortable with it, you know. You do, you do, because I really trip out on some of the <laughs> shit you post. I, I'm always going, fuck, and shit. Like, you know how they put LOL? Like, sometimes it really makes me, like uh, like, like you mentioned, like, I'll cackle. You right, 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 right. <laughs> like, yeah, but that's that's crazy. Yeah, See? no, I have major guy humor, but sometimes it makes my life harder because they autom cause men automatically get, like, perverted off of it. Oh, yeah. but I, I guess, I guess it, it is perverted humor but that doesn't mean like i'm trying to fuck you dude. yeah it you means, oh, that means she wants me even though she yeah, posted yes, for everybody to yeah. see exactly exactly I, I, I always exactly, tripped out on that dude. it's it's one it's so thing stupid okay it's one thing like uh whatever they say shoot your shot but some of these some cats are delusional as fuck delusional like, as yeah, yeah. <laughs> like damn bro like i don't think that was aimed towards you brother. no sorry no. to mention man you know no not at all so that's also something that i've been kind of like wondering about like should I should I switch that up? Like, is that bring certain energy to me in the man department? Like an energy that I don't want. But then on the flip side, I'm like, if this motherfucker can't take a joke, yeah, like, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. like how old are we right now? And it's crazy because it's like a like a thin line again, going back to entertainment. Like, right? It, it, you could like get away with it in movies. You could get away with it, mm -hmm. in, but then being a female artist, sometimes you can't get away with 
It's yeah. just saying what uh, maybe a male rapper might say. Like right. you just, you know, but but on the flip side of that, I, I wouldn't be able to get away with putting sprinkles on my, my, on my boobs. <laughs> <laughs> nobody would fucking nobody would dig that money nobody at no, all it'd probably go viral though what's, yeah <laughs> what's crazy is you know what's funny the only reason why <laughs> a, i, I ended way. up doing that shoot is my mm-hmm. homegirl dre blue shout out dre blue uh-huh. she gave me earrings for my birthday and they had like sprinkles on them uh-huh. and i was like oh these are cute and i was like inspiration was like, yeah yeah exactly exactly so i was like you, you happen to have just gotten out of the shower or something hey, look at these it, Boobs, earrings. And I, well, yeah. I've seen it be done before, so I was like, this is something that I could technically shoot in my house. Like, it's not going to be expensive to make happen. You know, the hair, everything I did myself besides, like, shoot it because the homie shot it. Um, so, yeah, so that that's how that came about. I, I initially wasn't like, yes, titties, priority. I was just... <laughs> <laughs> she said that, like, now, uh, too, after the podcast, like, people are going to, uh, like, you know, I'm a photographer, right? You right, know? right. All gotta, the creepers. I'll work within your budget. Right, uh, right, right, right. No, no. Right. See, part of why I brought that up, though, too, is because here, and this is a real story, but uh, my girl said her friend, and I think her friend, I don't know if her friend's all the way lesbian or bi or what, mm-hmm. whatever, but I, I think she commented on that picture. <laughs> And she says, and she says, well, this, this leads, this lead perfect segue into my next, you know, where we're going. But, yeah. um, she asked the question like, so, so, Hey, does she like girls or does she like, <laughs> does she like chicks or what, you know, what's her situation? Yeah, like, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, if you want, you know, you're pretty open about stuff. You've even said it on social before. I forgot what word you used to describe how you feel about my sexuality. Yeah. About yeah. male and female. Like, so you know what I'm. Saying? I consider myself bi, um, probably technically pan, pansexual, but like. See, there, there's all these little terms, and that's yeah, what yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. couldn't remember what the how you phrased it, but yeah. Right. So, but I don't. Sexuality is strange because sometimes you feel like until so pansexual means that you 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 could honestly be attracted to. A trans woman, a trans man, a straight, you know, an actual man, an actual woman. So because I haven't really experienced anything with a trans person, I'm, like, hesitant to, like, claim pansexual, you know? But, like, I think there are hella hot trans bitches and hella hot (laughs) trans men. So I'm like, okay, like, I can't say that if I didn't meet someone, you know, and we hit it off that, like, I wouldn't be open to it. You know what I'm saying? But because I mostly dealt with men and I have some experience with women, I, I just say I'm bi because it's probably, like, the easiest, the easiest. People understand it more than anything. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People understand well, it more than yeah, anything. Yeah, and then, see, it's also a conversation piece. If the person asking, if you felt like having a conversation, then you tell them that, and then you could get into it. Well, just it, tell but, them it would right. be like if you like Bruce and Caitlin. <laughs> so be, wouldn't that be a Yeah, question? exactly. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Don't discriminate. He was a he was a hell of an athlete back yeah. in the day. You know? Yeah. So, um, but I guess I f- I see myself settling down with a man. Yeah. But um, I, I like women, but I haven't actually dated women. I've just like experimented, just experimented or been yeah. or been so, sexual with women. So it'd be like more like maybe a. a you're I lean more, more sh- towards the ma- male, yeah, but yeah, then yeah. like. But I'm still, I'm still attracted. So to how women. about if one? Uh, see, this is another conversation though. But okay, if you're if you're with the man, mm-hmm. would you? Um, I, I don't know if the word is share, share or experiment. Would you introduce? With, yeah, uh, another, with, with uh, another kind of female into. Would the, you? Um, like to have no, a threesome. But, it, but if you guys basically, <laughs> you're talking about having a threesome. Ba- basically, but it, yeah. it, but not I mean, in a that's... like. A, uh, what's or are you the, talking about polyamory? That or yeah, that or, or a just threesome. have a boyfriend yeah, and yeah, girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like if you would you um, be okay with that if you're already comfortable in the relationship with the guy and all that? Um, Only because you have experimented with the woman. It before. really depends on mine and that man's relationship. Like, yeah. if 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 it's super strong and I'm super, we're super confident in each other and we're super secure with each other. 
and if we're like crushing on a girl or something like that and we talk about it you know i have no problem like talking about it and like see seeing where it's going but like i'm not just one of the i'm not like just out here like fucking everyone <laughs> you know what i'm saying like yeah it's still like it's still like well no that's because still like me, a- me and my ex we talked about it before and we were both like willing to like you know take a woman out on a date or whatever but like because we were both like well we need a vibe with her we need to make sure like we dig her and she's not a fucking idiot and it has to be one of the that's the like and that's why i'm bringing it up too but um it's kind of like it's one of those situations where um it's it's a touchy subject like yeah like it's just not like you're saying you just don't go random like hey come on like it's like you, you probably would have to like vibe with them make sure everybody's having fun and then sometimes things lead to the next thing exactly. and you're having a good time exactly and, yeah. like first and foremost yeah. you have to like you have to vibe with the person yeah. first and foremost it might not That's... even it might not even get there but like i mean i've gone to a point where it's like i see myself you're really settling down with a man but like if but i'm not against like dating a woman like if a woman came into my life and we hit it off and it went there then cool like i just i'm very like if you're a good person, if you're a good soul, and you know what I'm saying, it works, then I have no problem so with what it. A, it doesn't matter your your gender what or gender initi- identity. What initially attracts you then? Because, it, um, I mean, everybody's beautiful in their own way, mm-hmm. like obviously, but y- you see that in people or even a- appearance. Like you might see something that someone else might see in somebody, but what uh, is there something that originally, I mean, initially um, – attracts you like is it to a woman or to a person or i mean any any man woman like that you know Mm -hmm. kind of attracts you to them um i really like i like sense of style i like sense of humor yeah um i like intelligence um i like Mm open-mindedness so yeah i would say i would say those things so so basically like you'll become more attracted to somebody in other words if you kind of have a chance to at least converse with them yeah because it's it's not just like i mean obviously sometimes you see somebody and it's just somebody's just hot you know walking down the street or you know whatever pumping gas you know with the tank top on and you see (laughs) whatever you see somebody and and it might attract you but hair's uh, blowing yeah (laughs) or a a female with her hair blowing in the breeze yeah uh, like in slow motion but (laughs) but uh, you know that obviously there's certain things being hot isn't enough yeah that's that's what what i was kind of getting yeah 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 being hot definitely isn't enough yeah now and especially now to bring a little more to the table because anybody anybody could go get like stuff nowadays like oh you know what people don't like this about me i'm gonna go get a new uh, new one or whatever so i mean it uh, i think that's still important i'm glad you said that because some people still care about you know deeper things and just yeah i mean you want to be attracted to the person but like a lot of times the deeper stuff makes you more attracted to the person. Yeah. You know, instead of just like being a hot bitch and she's like a complete bimbo idiot and yeah. you're like, whoa, you just shouldn't talk, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. And, and, or she's like super just a vile, evil, controlling person, you know? Yeah. You know, even some of these, these dudes and, and, you know, that I see, I mean, I'm not saying some people do it on purpose. Maybe they have, there's something deeper there, but. Like, eventually, I, it's cool to have, like, a trophy, whatever they want to call it, on right. your arm or this and that. But, you know, people got to realize at some point, you probably still got to talk to them. Like, yeah. you still got to talk to that person. And if you don't have, no, like, there's nothing, yeah. like, yeah, it's like. A, See, yes, I mean, situations like that, it's like, uh, it's a transaction. It's a trade off. A lot of women who want to be kept don't really care about having a voice in the relationship. Yeah. And a lot of men who just want a trophy like don't really care about the bitch's voice like yeah, you yeah. know what i mean like yeah. it's just so it, it's kind of like i guess based on individuals needs it works for some people but if you want like a genuine you know like love based love foundational relationship it's got to be more than that it's got to be yeah more than just if i wasn't funny i think my girl would have probably left me a long time ago pretty yeah. funny yeah <laughs> honestly <laughs> well, she's attracted to me too but still yeah, yeah no it makes you hotter sense of humor is like 
Yes. I don't know what the. F- I'm, I'm still trying to figure out why my girls are attracted to me. But <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. I just, well, I'll just I'll keep. I, I, yeah, I'll just keep doing what, what I've been doing my whole life. It seems to work here. No, but um, yeah, that's real. I just wanted to get in. You know, besides just the sexuality part, it, it's deeper. When you, yeah. you can't, I feel like you can't talk about one without the other. At least that's how I am. Some people can, but yeah, um, usually it's it's kind of both sides, you know. Yeah, uh, for sure. Physically and mentally. Um, I wanted to get into something, man, because we we're talking about like I literally like fucking laugh out loud to your <laughs> to your some of the memes. Like there, it's 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 because this and and not everybody has the same kind of sense of humor and i'm not even saying i have the same sense of humor as you do but certain shit catches you because of like like for me it's like okay wit first it's like a something real clever but like kind of disguised and then it's mm-hmm. like but it's a straight jab at, and it's like yeah. that's why comedy is so dope to me it, it you can hit from all different directions and if, yeah i know we're getting to an age where people are kind of super sensitive and you know, right. cancel, whatever, cancel, cancel culture, culture, whatever yeah. they call it. But um, I've always felt comedy is somewhere where you can um, you could really uh, experiment, too. Yeah, like, so, really play with. Yeah. So, so I wanted to dive into that, too, because you mentioned it to me. Yeah. Um, but you're you're planning to get a little deeper into that too, right? <laughs> yeah, not too many people know. Like that's what, right. That's why we have this podcast. Yeah, right exactly. Here. I'm breaking it yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. We're rabbit season y- yeah let's so, do it so um back in the day when i, I got business cards made because i was like oh business cards it's a must right as an artist i actually did put comedian because i had that vision for myself but i was so overwhelmed with just being a rapper singer songwriter that i was just like okay like this is too big of a monster to like do both at the same time like it's just too much right and so I got comfortable on stage. I got comfortable doing music. So all of a sudden, like, comedy just got, like, something kind of put on the back burner. But I always knew that I was always funny. Like, I, I, I like people, like, I would be talking to people. They'd be like, they'd be laughing their ass off. And I'm like, I'm just talking. Like, yeah. what's so funny? Yeah. I don't know. You know? And so, like. I guess just uh, um, like maybe my storytelling or how I talk and how I tell stories or whatever it may be. People just think it's funny. So I actually some years ago, I went to like a comedy writing um, course with this guy. um, That's cool. Jerry. God, I forgot his last name. Jerry Garcia. No, he used to write for the Jay Leno show Mm -hmm. and I got it on Groupon and it was it was for comedy writing. And I was there, and I was there for two days, and I was just like, yo, like, this shit is, this shit almost comes, it comes very natural to me. Mm -hmm. Like, I understand making jokes and writing jokes almost, like, mathematically. Like, it's just very, or, like, chemistry-wise. I I just, I understand what, what makes people laugh. I understand the importance of delivery, the importance of the words you use and your arrangement of words. I understand, like, comedic timing, and I'm just like, Oh shit. So so me not being as um as visible on my social media, I, I had to get to a place where okay, I have to stay active somehow. So that's when I started posting the memes. And then I started writing jokes and so I started posting my jokes and people were like laughing their ass off. So I was like, Oh shit. And so now I don't even realize but like I've been testing out my jokes that are going to eventually make it to like a set, a comedy set. You put it into context with the set. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. So it's like through the years I've been writing lines, I've been writing like concepts, or even I've your tweets, huh? like your, the stuff you tweet because I've seen some of the yeah. ones where you post your tweets. Yeah, exactly. So funny. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just like, damn, I've literally been just like jotting down ideas, jotting down everything for a comedy set but it's just a matter of putting it all together Mm -hmm. so now that i'm not necessarily very visible in like the music or i'm not creating music yet comedy is like flowing out of me right now and i'm just like damn like what the fuck like if i don't do it now i'm never going to do it you know what i'm saying so like i won't say i'm a comedian until i actually do a set and i do a live set i'm happy that i'm saying it here because you guys could keep me accountable and could call me out you know like but but, well is that the like would that be what you prefer to do or would you also like because you mentioned like 
also like writing for comedies and like do, you know like sitcoms and shit that, I, that's a whole new you got i would love to be a comedic yeah. writer but oh, typically man. but typically how those gigs come it comes from networking as a comedian oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. get and get to know some and yes. then people different people show up just like at, at music concerts mm -hmm. there's producers in the audience you know uh exactly. a &Rs, whatever whatever might be um and that that's crazy but though. i would love i would love to write to write comedy um like Judd Apatow is like my favorite. Oh, yeah, uh, too. yeah I, him, I Seth Rogen. Yeah, oh, th that that duo is just my fucking favorite. So I always oh, told myself sure. like, if you, m I want my first movie, my first acting gig to be on like a Judd Apatow movie because it's just hilarious. It's just like well, stoner. I like in the, humor. in the way they keep yeah. it like it's like an actual like. If you like the homies, yeah, like people yeah. are just chilling, <laughs> but knocked so, up was great. But uh, some way so out good. shit happened. Uh, what else? Uh, super, super bad. bad. Uh, and then so the one good. they all did where they played their themselves. Um, uh, the end. The oh, end of, this is, is the end. This is the end. That, and that then was forty-year-old virgin. Yeah, 40 -year -old oh, that classic, was too. Classic. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> yes. When, he, when he's getting I the love shit. all those movies. What yes, me too. What did he say on that part? So perfect. When he when he's all. Fuck me and my oh, yeah. Kelly Clarkson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kelly Clark Clark Clarkson. Clarkson. And he's all fuck me. And, oh, and dude, I love that. that all that is improvised. Oh, I love that oh, yeah. all that shit is improvised. That, I love that. You could that. even see they pan on a couple of their, like, they're really laughing, like, hard because uh -huh. he was just saying some way out shit. Yeah, and they're just cutting it up. What was the other one? The Pineapple Express. Right? Pineapple oh, yeah, Express. Yeah, yeah. Hey, well, I was going to ask you that. Uh, uh, speaking of just, like, entertainment, like, during the pandemic, you know, the lockdowns and all that, mm -hmm. was there certain, like, shows or anything that you were getting into or, or any books or any, anything like that that you were, like, binging or? <sighs> Let me see. Or were you mostly working on your? Um, you know, I would say maj a lot of my material comes from <laughs> probably the dating scene, probably from like, yeah, my experience with men. So it was like after I didn't really start going heavy or like filling the need to write jokes until after maybe after me and my boyfriend broke up. But I was still like I said, I've been writing down jokes and ideas for years now. But when it started like flowing out of me is just like. I have a lot of shit in the dating. Especially when you had all that yeah, time with the from dating, all the, yeah, 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 with the dating, like the dating scene yeah. is so fucking terrible yeah. that I'm like, I gotta make some jokes out of this yeah. because it's insane. Yeah. It's so bad. So I would say that that's probably my biggest muse is just like the dating scene and different men that I've dealt with. It's so kind of it hilarious. Only, like that sucks though that it's only us that are fucking clowns, like men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like she probably like she mentioned women, but like they haven't embarrassed themselves enough as like men no. have. Like that's that's Aww. that's a, thanks I'm guys. Sure, I'm sure there's some that have. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. Sure, I don't know. I don't have much experience oh, with women, okay, but yeah. I I'm sure like there are cr I know, but I know there are crazy bitches out there. Oh yeah. <laughs> like I know there are crazy bitches yeah, that I would never yeah, like touch with like a ten foot pole. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I wouldn't even be friends with crazy bitches. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like I don't know why men deal with them. It's because they're hot or. Well, I do know. Uh, Never mind. Well, well, could be like men are crazy themselves in a, in a sense, you know, where they, you know, for like. Yeah, but sometimes it'd be like hella abusive. And like, I think men don't even realize how abusive it's it weird could be. Though, but I feel like. Like very like, controlling, like jealous Like on both women. sides, though. I mean, because on the, you know, on the flip of that, like, there's always. Um, it's almost like the other person maybe feels like they need that. Like, or say like there's yeah. a controlling, whether it's the guy or the girl, like maybe they feel like I need someone to control me. It's weird because yeah. I always wonder that too. Like what, what you, makes people stay yeah, in how situations do you, how like that? How do you deal that? with this shit? Yeah. Like all you just, yeah, shit. that's that, cool that, to you. There's people like, that, there is people that like, they, they actually just like, they like, they like it or maybe they thrive like about it or they is, like the so structure like, of it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, you know, it's I don't know. Or maybe they're just like have abuse from their childhood. It's like you said earlier though, everybody's like a different individual. You don't know what their deal is, what they're, you know, what they went through or what they like. like, I thank God my, my ex was like, none of my exes were controlling always very supportive so like i'm I, i've never well, i've never dealt with a controlling man i, I feel like actually i did when i was younger when i was like probably 18 19 i, I think the way though Mo moni that you carry yourself like you as a as a strong woman at least from you know from the yeah. outside looking in um i think you maybe you set that tone at the beginning and then well i mean that's uh, i try to be in my relationships too yeah i sure. try to establish like this i mean this is how i am so i, I mean yeah. if, if you like me enough to get or you, you can get used to it then yeah cool but if not like i'm 
I'm too old probably to change too much about myself yeah. nowadays. So uh, and honestly, I'm not an asshole, but I'm just, right. you know, I'm just who I am. And know? I'm not yeah. even like one of those women who's like, yeah, alpha female, yeah. alpha woman. I'm not even like one of those women because for me, it's all about collaboration. You know what I yeah. mean? Like what what works for what sex roles or gender whatever what works for a relationship is that relationship's business you know what i mean so like sometimes it makes more sense if the if the woman is making more money and they have a kid and the like child cares like a thousand dollars a fucking month it might make sense for for that man to stay home and take care of the kid Mm -hmm. or vice versa you know what i mean like i'm just I, I, i i'm not trying to control anyone Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, I don't want, that's why I'm just like, why is there such a power struggle here? You know, it is just about the, like the spirit of collaboration and a, listening to each other's needs. That's the best analogy right there is collaboration. And that's what relationships and, you know, um, even friendships and everything is, yeah. you know, it's a little give and take and compromise and, and you know, and, and communication, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, yeah, I had so. to get used to that, too, because like I, I'm used to always being so independent, like I would do my own laundry, do you know, whatever. Mm. But or make my lunch or whatever, but like, and it, but my girl will do it now. She does my laundry and she just does it like without me. And so it's like, but I'm like, oh, should I? Like, I was gonna, but fuck it, I guess I'm getting used to her doing it now, so yeah. I don't even touch it anymore. But you know, yeah, you know what? It's crazy because like when I was younger, like in my feminism, I used to be like, fuck that, I'm not gonna cook for them, fuck that, I'm not gonna do the laundry, fuck that, I'm not gonna do it. You should be able to do this yourself. But it's like as I got older and I got more com- like comfortable and confident in my womanhood, it's like when you care about your man. I don't know about other bitches. <laughs> I want to take care of my man. I want to nurture my man. Maybe yeah. it is because of my upbringing and how I seen my mom take care of my dad. So I think that has a lot to do with it, like the example you had growing up. But there is nothing wrong with wanting to spoil and take care of your man. It should it should be like that. Vice versa, you guys yeah. should be blessing each other. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Get in, get in where you fit in in each other's lives. Like yeah, and I think that's uh, that's important right there. But and, and like women cool. are just so like, I feel like. There are just women who, like, just take that. Don't get me Like I said, I am a feminist, but I feel like there are just, like, a certain sector of women, like, within the feminism movement that just, like, just, like went OD. Take it to a little. Yeah, there's a little far. extreme. I'm yeah. like, dude, okay, you could, there's nothing wrong with cooking for your man. Yeah. <laughs> like, chill out. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> like, he'll take you out to eat one day. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it'll you're be, good. It'll be, yeah, it'll, it'll be mutual. But, no, I know, I, I, I trip out on that, too, and. Uh, I know I'm probably going off the deep end here, but a lot of the times when they're <laughs> edit, no, just when they, yeah, right. When they're too extreme like that, when they're too extreme like that, I, I mean, usually like, I mean, from what I've seen from the most part mm-hmm. it's they don't even have a man. So it's like, like, it's like, maybe that's why you're not right, compromising right, at all. Like, right, right, and I'm right. not saying that dudes shouldn't compromise either. No, Cause that's all it's like you said, it's a collaboration. Right. Um, I, I wanted to, Go back. See, you know, this is what we do. We just have uh, cool conversations here. We're talking about some stuff that everybody could relate to. But I, I was going to say, you know, going back real quick to the comedy thing, like it's almost like um, our our journeys bring us to places. It's timing. We were talking about that yeah. uh, before we started today is like I've like known people that started off maybe as a rapper or a producer then they somehow wove their way, and again, it goes back to entertainment, and wove their way into, um, you know, whatever, uh, you know, from rapper to producer or mm-hmm. vice versa. Then maybe acting, yeah. tried some acting, and then then somehow through all these connections and that path they took, they found a connection, like, to start businesses and mm-hmm. different things. So everybody's journey and path is different. And yeah. Because you start off with one ambition, it doesn't mean you can't dive into another, especially, and yeah, again, exactly. that's why I go back to entertainment. It's all kind of intertwines. But I was going to say with what you've done already, like, okay, first be, first writing, right? You got to write your stuff, so- songwriter, you know, then execute, you mm-hmm. know, in the lab, um, which takes practice and practice, obviously, you know, to get it right, you know, unless you're punching in every word or whatever with the with the engineer. And then rocking stages. And then you yeah. start to feel how to how to vibe with the crowd, and 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 you see how they're feeling that night, or if they're a little lo- like you know which way to kind of take them during your performance or your time on right. the stage. And I think that all plays in, um, 
like excellent for going that route for you yeah. because yeah. now you get all those things in other words like some there's a lot of funny people but they don't have like the stage, stage presence. presence yes they're not yeah. going to be able to go up on the stage and yeah. actually make that shit make sense and make people laugh i think what makes me nervous is like what makes me nervous is because it's comedy is literally having like a, a conversation with the audience the thing with performing and music between your between your songs you could say a little something interact a little bit but when you're performing it's almost like it, like an out of body experience like you could lose yourself in the song in the music just make sure you hit all your lines you know you're dancing whatever a lot of times it's like a flash like it, it just it's like a flash when yeah. you perform you know you get off stage and you're like fuck like that was that it felt like it felt like this you know it felt like it was super did, quick did i remember to do that part yeah like it's like yeah, i but, know what you're talking so, about so so you almost don't have to be too present as long as you're hitting your lyrics but for comedy it's almost like you have to be present because you have to feed off of the energy yeah. in the room and then also if you get hecklers you got to deal with the hecklers yeah. and then you got to interact with the people in the front row you know like it, there it's a whole fucking art Mm -hmm. that i'm just about to be getting started on you know and so it's just it's intimidating yeah, for sure. like anything new is fucking intimidating and that's why i haven't done it yet because i'm just like fuck <laughs> like, i feel you on that like, you I, know I just it's just feel... completely different it is a, a it's a different even though it is on stage i feel like it's definitely going to be a different experience like i feel like i'm gonna have to like for sure calm myself down more be more present in my body be more present like in my mind and like just confidence. like and just like take it slow like relax like don't like you can't like spout out your lines because you have to you're almost acting on stage yeah. too yeah yeah because, because i'm very animated mm -hmm. and, and like working through some stuff it's like yeah i'm gonna have to like do looks you know certain face expressions certain movements certain you know what i mean like so it there is an acting element because it's almost like a character that i'm going to be playing i realized that's what i realized like my public persona is probably so much more um like raunchy like then then like you know us just chilling like before when we were just chilling here like that's not me i'm not like turned on like turned up to 15 at all times you know what i'm saying um so i, I and i kind of play with that online like you know, you guys probably think I'm, like, one way, but I'm, like, actually super chill. I, like, be in bed by 9 p.m. I cook. I chill with my cats. <laughs> and that's just, that's all I do. Go to work, you know? I'm not, like, this huge playgirl, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, you know, um, and that's the thing with, uh, I guess, social media. Uh, yeah. Some people take that to the extreme yes. of, yeah, let me... Pre they think pretend it's... i'm rich let me pretend yeah. that, you know re meanwhile you know yeah it, it, life ain't so sweet did you ever see that movie funny people that was another i think judd apatow movie i don't know if uh, that was the it was the dramedy was that the one that was kind, kind of, of a dramedy? yeah it was uh who, uh, who was that was seth rogan uh, he's basically uh, was adam sandler in that one yeah adam sandler okay. he's I don't like think the I've veteran comedian but seth rogan's oh, he's, a, I he's up and coming out. but he, and uh, he, you know that's like his idol yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. Until he gets to meet him, it, it's crazy. The, uh, even the Rizzas in that movie, it's a good. Oh, one. You, you should see that. Yeah, one. It's, yeah. It's, it's, I'm gonna check that out. It's kind of out. about the same thing you're oh, talking about. Oh hell yeah, yeah. I gotta check it out for sure. But like, I'm realizing that th it is still a like a public persona. So like, when I'm doing comedy, it's going to be a character that I'm doing. You know what I mean? It's very much me. Like, it's not someone else, or I'm not trying to be someone that I'm not. It's just like. And then with, with comedy, you could be multiple characters, too. Yeah, yeah. so that's what I'm saying. It's just There's like, a lot to play with there. It's, it's cool. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. And um, I've actually, I've actually. Ah, uh, nervous. Hey, Moni, I've actually. I'm so scared. I've thought it before <laughs> myself. Like, there's certain things and all these things. That's why you're making me think there's like, it's open, though. There's so mm -hmm. much you can do with it. And, yep and play with and and especially being an artist and a creator and yeah. then being funny obviously you have to be that to be yeah and then being you know. physically funny like yeah. being fi like lucille ball like she she made funny faces she made funny movements you know like i think who was it like carol burnett you know, uh, she would she yeah. would yeah. she would overdo she really and she good. would like yes. fall or like over exaggerate yes, it, you yes. Know, like, and yeah. that's like physical comedy so yeah. it's just like is that what wow. you is that what you gravitate towards the physical because there's people that can be funny too just 
They could be this. deadpan monotone. too. Monotone. Monotone, and they just say some. What the fuck no, did I, that food I, just say? Like, it's like, no, I definitely like. I definitely see myself like maybe like you know playing with voices, playing mm-hmm. with looks, mm-hmm. playing with um, that, you know like that, activities or charades. That or, comes with that. The, the creative side though i think yeah. like that that's something that's that's dope to hear that that the which way that you know you're gonna go with it and stuff and that and that, and again ah, yeah it's so well-rounded <laughs> um you know comedy has so it. many a- aspects to it it's, it's right cool. I, let me ask this before we go on to the next um uh any specific you mentioned lucille ball but any specific comedians that really you know you, lo- I mean, you love their stuff I I mean, Chappelle. I, mean, I love so many. Cha- yeah. I do love Chappelle though. Oh, I that guess guy's just a genius. Be, you know why I love him because like, he's worked himself to a place of like so much respect and like cultural respect that like he could literally get on stage, not say one joke, but people want to go because they respect his mind and they respect his his thought process. And I love that. I love that he he speaks on like real life shit and like real societal shit. Um, I know there are other people who do that, but it's almost like he just he just gets up there and like he, he just be talking. He has a cigarette and he just be talking about like what's on his mind. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? What's been going on with um, what's been going on in his mind? But like movie wise, yeah, like I said, uh, Judd Apatow and uh, Seth Rogen. Um, oh, I do love, um, oh my gosh, mm, I'm going to get canceled. I loved Louis C.K. Um, <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, I know he did it, but he, hey, he used to have a little, dr- well, I don't remember what he used he to He had drink. a really good show. I used to watch Louis a lot. Um, that was a really good show on FX. Um, I, I like that. Who's like, the other, uh, I like Bill Burr. Oh yeah. Um, see, he gets up. See that this is why what's so dope about some of these guys that you mentioned, like even Chappelle, is they are genius enough. They'll take you to like such a comedic place, but then be able to slip something in that's mm-hmm. just like really something that people need to hear, but yes. maybe not ready to hear. Yes. And then they they figure out a way to slip it in there. And then people like you're still gonna laugh, but then you go home thinking but a little it, but, more. But but what it does is it it cushions the message. Yeah. So that someone who usually is against or opposes that message, they go back and think about yeah. it because they were just laughing mm-hmm. at something that they that technically uh, countered their perspective. Yeah, they but they found the humor it. in it, mm-hmm. and they're able to grasp it more or understand the other side of it more. And it just opens up people's mind in, in, in a way that isn't so um, aggressive. It's all very yeah, they subtle. They put a little bit of cream it's and sugar in their subtle. coffee. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. don't be so harsh with it. it, it 100%. Yeah, and, uh, and, and again, that's why I'm just going to the genius because of comedy. Because who wants, to, who wants to be yelled at? Who wants to be lectured? Mm-hmm. No one wants to be out no one you wants, know what I'm saying? And no one wants to be told what to do. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, so. so it really does cushion. It softens the blow for a lot of really, really important topics. And hey, while, while we're on it, what's, who's your favorite comedian stand up uh, well i'm um, shit i have a range but i know like off top um you know i always like <clears throat> excuse me uh rodney dangerfield i was gonna say oh. that too rodney dangerfield um george carlin was a fucking oh genius. i love george carlin genius man he was like one of those dudes i felt like like he was almost good. ahead of his time because yeah. he he was saying controversial shit back in the like what was it 60 i love when he gets on his like religious his Dude. religious rants is but like the, the thing is and and see that's the thing with, with comedians is they a lot of them with that kind of humor like george carlin could say his shit because if you had a conversation with him and you didn't agree with him he could back up what he said because he's right. educated enough like he knows religion like he he was educated enough in religion politics mm-hmm. um uh, world affairs, everything, yeah. to where he could mix that all in, and you couldn't really argue with him because you could tell he knew what he was talking about. Right, like, yeah, so. right, and it's something about like a, a comedian's ability to like break things down in such an understandable yet enjoyable way mm-hmm. that just like disarms people, and it's just like. Yeah, you have n- you can't do anything but laugh at it. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And Some I- shit that you usually hate, you're sitting there laughing at it because, damn, when he puts it like that, yeah. I kind you of know, agree. You know who else I like? Forgot to throw in there. I like uh, I like Dio Hughley a lot. 
Oh, oh yeah. that he's dude's really good. that dude's really he's another smart one of those dude. ones that's really smart. And yeah. he, but he's able to like clown and be fighting. I I remember he had a, a sitcom back in the day that was actually it was a funny ass oh, show. I used to show. watch oh, the, that. The yeah. Hughleys. Yeah, yeah, the Hughleys. Rest yeah. in peace, Norm Macdonald. He was. Oh, oh I yeah. Recently. Yeah. Just was he one week. of yours? Or uh, yeah, actually, he was pretty funny. I didn't see all this stuff, but like I remember him from Saturday Night Live, that movie Dirty Work and stuff. But I just remember, like I like. Uh, uh, comedians that were like a character and but mm. it seemed like they were that same character even if they were regular and just talking to him or yeah. one movie like Roddy Dangerfield like you said yeah. um, or even someone like Gilbert Gottfried where he was always on, ah, like oh, he was gotcha. funny to me and then even um, and even him like uh, uh, like Norm Macdonald he was just like the same guy and I've heard even like some quotes of people that said he was the same guy on stage that he was backstage pretty much so gotcha. you know, oh, yeah. so, you know. speaking of uh, you know what and i gotta mention two more i can fuck i'm going through the whole but uh, <laughs> uh jim carrey and oh and, my no, god and uh jim and also How um I forget? Uh, fuck, what's his name robin williams, robin williams. Yeah. i was robin going there williams. because mm-hmm. you mentioned mm-hmm. physical comedy yes, these, guys, these guys part of their stuff legends. was getting all yeah and man uh rob oh robin god. williams like i literally seen like different docs and stuff on him and yeah. like a lot of his stuff was also just straight on the fly. Like he was so clever, mm-hmm. he would go from one thing, whatever, wherever his mind went, his or, or, or the yeah. audience laughed at this. Or let me dive deeper in it, and then he would, Sheesh. but but so quick with it. Yeah. Like his yeah. wit was quick-witted. so quick. Yeah, yeah. quick witted man. Yeah, Jim Carrey for me. I I forgot about Jim Carrey, but yeah, Jim yeah. Carrey for sure. I mean, comedic actor to me, one of the greats. Oh. And I think for uh, sure, like like when. God forbid, when he dies, like that would be a hard day for me because he's he's amazing. And, and I'm plus I'm the new Ace Ventura. I got a gang of animals. I'm working on getting more pets. Oh I'm, yeah, you got like penguins in the refrigerator. Uh, and pretty shit? soon, pretty <laughs> soon. I have to make a, enough. I have to have make sure their environment is cold yeah, enough. He's so. got a killer uh, fire marshal Bill impression too. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> You don't have to do it. <laughs> hey, but I, 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 I can't do it right now. We'll, we'll come back to that. I, I'll do it in a sec. Okay. Uh, no, but uh, yeah, man, I'm a uh, I'm a pet guy. I'm the new Ace Ventura. So we've had a good conversation so far. Kind of, um, you know, inter, you know, talked about entertainment a lot. How everything kind of coincides and stuff mm-hmm. like that. What what made you originally? Um, want to even go that route is it have you always been you know like that or did you open up more as you got older i mean because it's one thing to create but to present it is a whole other thing too to when you actually have to perform it and stuff like that that's a different dimension you know um i realized that i needed to be more open-minded about creativity because i literally go through times when like this doesn't feel good to me right now, but this does. Mm-hmm. And then there'll, 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 there will come a time where this no longer feels good to me anymore, but this does. Mm-hmm. So I'm realizing like, oh shit, like this is still an outlet. You know what I mean? And instead of just like closing myself off to all these other possibilities, just bring everything else along with you on the ride, you know? And and um, just trying not to judge and control and put too many labels on what is art and you know what what is um what is creativity and and that's what i realized like the whole point and purpose of being a creator and being an artist is like because you create art to live a happy life like you create art to not kill yourself it makes it, sorry it, did that get dark real it, quick sorry guys. no i mean it I is mean. like therapy i get to, uh, i mean you know it sounds cliche but it is so it, it's it, like why am i restricting myself to what an artist is to strictly a rapper singer songwriter Mm -hmm. you know um when the essence of art is what heals you Mm -hmm. you know what you what you do that heals you Mm -hmm. so i just stopped like i just stopped judging myself i I stopped judging what i was doing and just being like yo for some reason now i want to i want to teach myself how to edit for some reason i want to get into abstract art for some reason i want to start doing nails for some reason i want to start doing comedy for some reason i want to start doing skits so it's just like fuck it just just do it and it's not that i'm not doing music anymore it's just right now it's rollout time you know what i'm saying and since it's rollout time i could kind of put more like physical work behind getting on stage doing comedy you know what i mean yeah. um and eventually, I want to. Whew, this is big, guys. 
I want to eventually like I want to do like a one woman show shit where my my sets are comedy and music. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm finding ways like to the old incorporate. School, like they used to do like ske- what they call it sketch. Co- uh, those, what those sh- those shows like. Uh, you know what I'm talking like about back in the day. It's ske- they do is like the sketch memory. comedy pieces, but in the middle they could do some music right. and just right. or dancing some. Cra- you oh know. gosh, what's his name? It enter- this it's one, entertaining. There's dude. this one comedian. Damn it, it's not Bill Burr. What's his name? White boy looks really young. Anyways, I saw one of his stand-ups, and he's playing the piano and singing songs like but making it funny and like going back and forth between comedy i've seen that guy before i don't, I don't remember his name, name. i don't remember either me. yeah but we'll have to research that. but i've seen him before yeah yeah he's, and he's it's just like damn clever and, and then well. you have and then you have like childish gambino who d- has atlanta he's he writes and writes and um he used to write for 30 rock um he used to write for um uh Community Damn, and I didn't acted, know that. I didn't know yeah, that. yeah, and acted on Community. Now he has his own show on FX called Atlanta. He acts in it and he writes. I think probably produces it, and he just dropped like a great album like a year or so ago. You know what I mean? So it's just like there are really no fucking rules. Like there are no rules you to this shit. Can't be putting this in a box no more. No, and I've been told like, oh, you have to, you have to pick one. You have to choose one. And can- I'm like, I get that. Like, music's gonna be my number one, but but I'm still gonna have to, you know, for my sanity. Yeah. yeah. I have to just do whatever the fuck I want to do because I'm an Aries well, and I'm rebellious. Well, what's his name is doing? Like Nick Cannon does with the Wild and Out. I mean, it's kind of like it's like freestyle yeah. rap mixed with comedy. Right. You know? Right. It's still, like, for sure. And he's had albums out, and you know, Shay's favorite album. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, not, hey, I mean, I'll give him that he's an all around entertainer. Not that I would ever listen to anything he does, <laughs> but no, but he is like he's done. He's a comedy yeah. actor music yeah i mean that that's always good to you know be that well around yeah exactly. he, he used to uh be i remember you know acting and stuff back in the day like he he got rolled radio host now too radio yeah host. right uh, just no, he's, like you said so many opportunities well just start opening up from these different avenues yeah. like it's just it's just you get to the next avenue and then an opportunity comes and then you go down that road and you see where the next opportunity goes and you go down that road and it's just and it and it and it never takes away from still creating, still yes. being artistic, and yeah. Still Be- and that's why I don't necessarily and like active. to. S- I mean, I have no problem saying rapper because I'm a rapper. But when you say artist, it's just so much. Yeah. It's just so much broad, and it just like encompasses so much more things. When you say, "Oh, I'm an artist," yeah, you know what I mean? I, like I like to create. And yeah. I'm the, f- the artist formerly known as. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to change my name to a symbol. Yeah. Right. For, for sure. I think nobody can pronounce. Yeah. Right. <laughs> They're like, uh, this guy. <laughs> or like a, just a weird sound. Like, like, a, like my name is. That's my, <laughs> and I have to figure out a way to spell it. I don't know how right. to spell it yet. But any, anyways, bad. We're here chilling with the homegirl Moni. We got into a lot of. Uh, Cool stuff. We're gonna get into the the rabbit fire round in a sec. Uh, Shay, you got anything? Uh, uh, okay. So we are. I know we already know how much you like comedy, but uh, yeah. favorite movie genre other than comedy? Movie genre other than comedy. Ooh, that's rough. That's too hard because I do love. Damn, I love scary movies and I love documentaries. Sci-fi too. Oh my god, I love sci-fi. Oh, <laughs> I love, okay, I yeah, love crazy. sci-fi. Yeah, no, so I, 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 oh no, that's what I realized. I'm a big fantasy person, so I really do like, but I don't like fantasy like, like knights and dragons and all that stuff. No, I love dragons. Oh, yeah. I love dragons. I love vampires. I love superheroes. I love anything that has to do with a person having superhero powers oh, yeah. or like some kind of sixth sense or some kind of just like I'm pissed that I don't have superpowers. I don't like I don't understand why I don't have like a the movies that, that take you away from like re- reality a little yes. bit. Like I always like that. But what yes. could be like, if, you know, or maybe. So know. I've grown to realize I am a huge nerd. I'm just a huge oh, nerd yeah. and I'm OK with that. And that's yeah. fine. Yeah, I I. I, I you know, realized that some some years ago too. And <laughs> yeah. I, I, I came to grips. I came to terms. Yeah, with yeah it. came to terms it. with it. I think I, I love everything that people shit on. I think all of us have like everybody has some. It's just expressed more in others. The nerdism. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But I mean, me like I know 
people trip out on me when I'm talking to my pets and like <laughs> holding like my little fucking. I got a new, uh, my newest one is a bearded dragon. Oh, And he's crazy. still a baby, but he's tame and everything. What's he lets his name? me hold him. Van Exel. Oh. <laughs> he, uh, after one of the old uh, ex Lakers. But, right. Um, he, he lets me, like, I'll go home sometimes, buzz, whatever. I'll go in, go in my garage. He's my garage pet. And I'll just be in there just holding him, chilling. <laughs> People go in, and I'm, like, talking to him and shit. And, like, so I guess I, we all have it a little bit in it. Yeah, for sure. So um, I was going to ask uh, off top uh, your favorite, uh, if you do have a sweet tooth, favorite uh, sweet. I like uh, cookies. I like chocolate chip cookies with walnuts. They got to have walnuts oh. in them to be ideal. I like those, too. My mom makes them. They're pretty, but oh, oh th- she makes these ones that are really bomb with uh, their oatmeal chocolate chip with walnut. Oh, I don't know if you've ever tried those. those are so bomb. do you like do you like the soft cookies or like the crispier one? I like a cookie that has like a hard outside but soft inside. Oh, okay. That's like me. A, that that's like basically that a real like one. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. that's a real cookie. Like not from a package. That's like oh, somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody made that shit. But but like the store bought, I love the Keebler Elf, the M M&M and cookies. Fire. Or Tate's right. Tate's has really good cookies. And those are a little bit on the crispy side. There, what was the fucking place that I tried you know like, who has uh it's crazy but ampm has good cookies it's crazy really the, the gas station yeah they make them that they bake them there but they're good they're, they're actually good they're i'm trying chocolate to think chocolate. where th- it was some place they had like i was working like they were having marijuana this fixed the memory years back and i was going working out of state different places and i think it was arizona or something and they had this cookie spot it was fucking bo- like I, like it was so dank dude. i, I want can't cookies even... now thanks yeah i know i know <laughs> no you know what though I, I like cookies but i also like fuck for some reason i like uh cakes and cupcakes too. oh i love cakes i love uh, but white then i cake, go to pie frosting. and i like pie like uh, fuck it i have <laughs> a sweet all tooth. of it yeah. loaded up yeah i have a sweet tooth um <laughs> Okay, uh, I was going to ask you top uh if you have top 3 uh, actresses. Oh. Oh, okay. I love Kimberly Elise, the one that was um she was in uh Diary of a Mad Black Woman. She was in John Q. She was the mom in John Q. I think I know who you're talking oh, about. Oh, I think isn't she the one that played uh, DL Hughley's yeah, wife in Yeah, she played his wife in the Hughley. Shut yeah. up. That's what I was just going to say. Her. I think it is. Yeah, oh, I, I don't is. know. Yeah, I think that um, is her. I really do like her. I love uh, Jennifer. I think Jennifer Lawrence. I love Jennifer Lawrence. I And let me see. My third one will ha- Oh, Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie. Mm. What, yeah, what she, was she she's, she's the suicide squad. She's the Harley Quinn. She's Harley, Harley Quinn. Oh, oh. She was right, in right. The Wolf of Wall Street. She's hot as hell, and mm-hmm. she's so good. She, she transforms in her. I, I'm sure I have, like, more that I'm probably more excited about, but those are those top. I'm trying to think of my... I'm, I can't even think off top. My favorite. I can't I like really a lot of, right now. I'm tired. I, 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 I drew a blink right now, and I asked. I know. Usually I have mine ready. I'm like, Marijuana wait a minute. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to think. It's like... It's because I like the... Act like actors and actresses that like they can really um like transform mm-hmm. into what they're playing and mm-hmm. and you know whether whatever it is betty white That's oh, betty. Betty White. <laughs> <laughs> hey speaking of comedy, comedians yeah. yeah speaking of she had her OG. she had impeccable timing in comedy even yep. when she's like 80 something 90 years old uh, so um did we ask oh actresses uh favorite r&b singer you can name Probably a couple. Kalani right now. Okay. Kalani is, yeah, she's pretty hot. Kalani. I mean, talented, yes, but. Oh, the full package. The full package. Because yeah. the way you said hot sounded like you know. Beef. She's hot in every way. Yeah, yeah. There you yeah. go. She's well rounded. Yes. Jay, you got any more? Um, is there any other interest that you have that people wouldn't like? Wouldn't think that you don't really like. That you just do like a hobby or anything like that. Besides <laughs> nails, I didn't know you did nails. I just started. I did you do yours? I did. Oh, okay. I did do See. my nails. See that, everybody? Yeah, hit one day, up. yeah, one day soon. I hope to make money. Come I'm a side hustler. I'm a hustler. I'm come, a fucking hustler. So. Come with the bag if you hit her up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing too crazy. Um, but um, okay. I'll tell you something that's really weird about me that not many people know. So I watch a lot of like YouTube. And there's this one. Have you heard of like hoof trimming? It's oh. it's a career of people that like 
they there's like livestock and like cows horses all that kind of stuff and they trim their hooves to keep them like healthy and like you know they're like getting a pedicure Anyways, oh they probably get like i'm assuming like something like a callus and different things too like yeah I mean, they, there's a lot of shaving yeah there's a lot of like yeah anyways i am like obsessed you know how some people are like into like popping pimples or like the and some people are. I don't get that one oh. either. <laughs> I'm not that. Oh, person. my girl watches that show, Doctor Pimple Pop. Yeah, Pimple I, Popper. Yes. Man, I got so yes. close. I had to turn away. I'm like, dude, please yes. don't watch this when I'm here. Yes. But. So I don't watch that, but I watch like hoof trimming stuff on YouTube. Oh, that's way out right there. <laughs> that's fucking way. Out. I know. I don't even know how it came about, but I'm like, wow, this is very interesting and it's very calming and like it's just mindless entertainment i've actually never i mean i knew somebody had to do it but i just never thought of it as a a thing like it's a thing yeah it's a whole career hoof trimming is a thing i didn't know don't worry i'm not gonna get into hoof trimming i just like watching it on youtube oh watching it i thought you were actually talking about you want to go do it it. she's training to i thought you were gonna like practice i'm starting with the real women she went to a seminar <laughs> Hoof trimming. That's just, yeah, that's, that's a good answer. That's, that's pretty. Yeah, pretty no, but that's that. yeah, that's like so weird that I, it, uh, it's so random. I think my, well, I don't know. It's not even that that weird. I think, but people might not always know. But I like now. I didn't used to, but I love I love planting plants and flowers. I mean, yeah, at my house. That's and awesome. I, and yeah, then gardening, watching them grow, like yeah. And I get mad when they don't make it. I'm like. What I do? Oh, what I do? I'm a wrong. terrible plan dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a funeral. It's like, was it too, too much sun or what? Right. Too much water? I, I w- honestly, I wish I could do plants in my apartment, but my cats, which is uh, oh my god, grow catnip. Yeah. They'll love that. That'll oh, mellow them out crazy. too. Seriously, it will. It'll mellow them. They smell it and they just start laying out. You ever give catnip your cat? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because yeah. uh, I gotta get some more. I know. Yeah. Well, uh, it like amps them up and then they'll just. I always chill trip out, out right? on that, dude. Yeah. I always, I always trip out on that. I just like. <laughs> yeah. I just love that. Okay, shit. I just got one more. Then oh, going back to the to the superhero thing. Who's your favorite superhero? Probably Batman. Oh, okay. I fucking Let's love see. Batman. Batman? Okay. And even though I know like he's definitely clearly not the most powerful one, I just like his story. He's like this rich playboy, like yeah. fucking models, and then like beats people up on yeah. his like time off. But he still put it on the training, put in the work, and everything yeah, that yeah, he needed yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's badass. He's see, badass. The, the, their movies are dope, though. Like some of the the Dark Knight shit, like the trilogy, I fucking love. Uh, back in the day, like I had a few comic books and shit. I wasn't super into it. I, I was collecting a little bit for a little while, but mm-hmm. then. Um, I, I do enjoy some of the movies, but then some of them com- like are a little corny for me. But yeah, then, they're really campy. Yeah, but but some of them are like really really well put together. I think. Yeah, but, I like uh, the darker. I like the darker take on Batman. So, so yeah. Christopher Nolan's uh, Dark Knight uh, trilogy. Oh, for sure. That's like uh, my Batman shit. Begins, yeah, that. Yes, yes. So I have one, and then because you mentioned uh, cooking and stuff, what's your uh, what what's your go to dish when you're cooking for somebody? Um, it could be a transgender. It doesn't have to. No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't matter who it is. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, no, no, Whoever no. you're cooking for. Honestly, non-binary. The, 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 the easiest the easiest <laughs> thing to cook is like uh, a pasta, like an Alfredo. Right. Like I'll do like a shrimp. That's your go to right shrimp, there. Shrimp, broccoli, mushrooms. What kind of pasta though goes with that? Uh, I'll probably the do the um or, the linguini. Uh, right. Probably the well, linguini. I'm starting noodles. to learn more about all that too. I watch the cooking channel. I like Chopped. That's my like. Oh, one I of my, love. It's one of my favorite. I used shows. to I used to watch so much cooking channel Food Network with the, like a marinara sauce or like a cream sauce. Like no, <laughs> look at this guy. I know his <laughs> chops. Uh, yeah, look at his chops with over with here. With this, um, this, with I would the, definitely do an Alfredo, or I just recently uh, found like a like a pesto Alfredo, so it's like a mix of both worlds, oh. which is really good. Oh shit! Yeah, now we're. I'm That's just like if I'm putting something like quick together, you know, and I'm yeah. like just getting a pasta, like getting it I, yeah, from that, the store and not from scratch. And, and I, me- I was meaning like you know, if, like first, Throw I don't know, first shit. or second date, whatever it is, when you cook, oh, cook for you. A, cook for somebody, um, that that would be it. Make some pasta. Hell yeah! Because then like I'll have pasta lef- works. Pasta works because yeah. like I'll also have leftovers for the next day yeah. for lunch. So. <laughs> 
It's not all about you and yeah, yeah. your date. It's also about what you're eating at, for lunch and the next it, uh, day. Yeah, keep it, uh, you know, it has to be in cohesion with the daily schedule. Yeah. That's what it is. Hey, Moni, uh, I want to thank you for coming. Um, this has been dope because we also yeah. got a first glimpse on some of the new ventures you're going to be going into Great. and stuff like that. Yes, yeah. Snow will be there. I yeah, know. yeah, it will be. Yeah. You know, unless you want us to wait till the first, or, you know, I mean, till the second or third show, but right. either way, right, just let right. us know. You yeah, know? no, for sure, for yeah. sure. And, and that's what's cool because it's like I know so many like promoters and like show like show creators and shit that I know like I'll be able to like get up there and do a set. Like, oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I'm yeah. not tripping. Like, yeah. And I'm not. Ha I'm, I'm not gonna have a hard time finding stages oh, to sure. get on and rock. Yeah, do that shit. Right. That's gonna be dope. Um, let them know where they can find you and all okay. that stuff. Yeah, uh, you could find me on Instagram and pretty much everywhere at the homegirl Moni. Moni spelled M O N I E. I have a new song out now everywhere called Everything I Want, and I'm gonna be opening for Gavlin um, over at Catch One on. Thursday. By the time by the time this comes out, the show will have already uh, happened. But oh yeah, but but you know they'll probably see that too, and then then they'll come and watch, want to watch, listen to the podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah they yeah, might yeah, discover yeah. you there and go check this podcast. Right, you know? for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, well, it's always good catching up with you guys. It's always good seeing you guys. Thank you. Side is second home to me. Yeah, hell yeah, love this place. And you know, um, you know, you grew up somewhere close to here, so yeah, uh, you know, it, it, it's literally it, it, my stomping grounds. Yeah, hey. Uh, shout out to also uh, uh, Underground Hip Hop Blog. I wanted to oh, say hell that yeah. too. Uh, hell the yeah. homies over there, man. They're What's up, brothers? Pretty good man. shows. Right doing now. some dope shows. Yeah, they shows are. And, they totally are. You know, and I just, I just love. They, they really take care of us. Like, yeah, they really take care of us for they, sure. They care about the artists and, and for different sure. things. For sure. Shout out to those, our those are those are homies. Like we don't like. Like be putting pictures of ourselves all all the time out out there on social media. Like, hey, these are my friends. But like, those that know know, man. Those are the homies right there. Man, huh? Ar Armando fucks with me, dude. And he <laughs> like we we grew up. He I think he grew up in like Downey. I grew up in Pico Rivera or something like that. So like once he found that out, he's been like showing me love. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's been showing cool. me love, and I'm like, dude, you're so cool. Yeah, no, they're the, they're cool, man. What up, homies? Yeah. Hey, uh, we'll we'll see you uh, guys on the next one, man. Uh, again, thanks to the homegirl Moni for coming through and you, chopping it up with this man. It's all about that cool combo right here on oh, the yeah. Rabbit Season podcast, man. Shout out my brother Shay Whitey, producer, co-host right there. Uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Bye.